that's me calling you my beautiful forest enchanted creatures because today I am a princess. I mean I do carry that I'm a princess Y2K baby t-shirt energy every day of my life as you all should. But today I'm talking about the traditional Barbie Rapunzel fairy topia princess and the pauper star princess because today we are trying on princess dresses. And I really do think I'm the perfect candidate for this because number one, I'm extremely ladylike, just all around, yes. Number two, I'm really diligent, okay? Make sure to remove all of the nacho residue from my visage before I begin filming. And number three, I completely oppose and ridicule the monarchy. Actually, I don't think- <laughs> well, Let me get this straight, you think that- That photo of Prince Philip. Is funny? I do. And I'm tired of pretending it's not. Um, and you know, I am obsessed with an app called Dress Up Time Princess. And if that led into a sponsorship right now, that would be kind of iconic. It, it's not going to. Although I did get randomly obsessed with it because I wanted to see what all the hullabaloo is about. And now I've logged in for 48 days straight. <laughs> okay. Um. So really, I am the perfect princess candidate. Move over, Sophia the First. <laughs> move over, Kate. Move over, Megan. It's me. <laughs> but in all seriousness, you know, I know homecoming and prom season is coming up for those of you in the Northern Hemisphere. And I think formals in Australia or balls are kind of just a random times of year thing, or at least that's how I felt. I feel like they just happened. But in terms of my qualifications in formal wear, I went to six formals slash balls slash whatever you want to call them. And I really ran the gamut from buying, you know, some more expensive dresses, which I'm really happy to say I have worn a lot <laughs> since I purchased them, which is good because that was the idea. If you're gonna buy a slightly more expensive dress, it needs to be something you wear a lot. So I've worn them to weddings and uni balls and things like that. And I've also bought a $6 dress from a thrift store. I haven't really purchased many since that time. That was a little hot second ago. And I feel like now more than ever, we just have so many options for buying formal dresses online. I think I bought a dress from Mod Cloth. And I think the other dresses I bought in person, the formal dresses I guys was that one Sherry Hill dress that was a crop top and a maxi skirt. And then the Camilla <laughs> caftans, which it's definitely a vibe. I think now they do some stuff that I'm more into, but I remember at the time, everyone was fighting over which bejeweled, bedazzled caftan they were gonna wear and making sure they wouldn't wear the same bedazzled caftan. They did feel like I was in the twilight zone. <laughs> Literally the Camilla caftan. Am I the drama? I don't think I'm the drama. The chokehold they had on my age group was unmatched, honestly. But I definitely think that my tastes from when I was obviously a teenager to now in my kind of early 20s have changed a little bit. And I was lucky enough to have JJ's house reach out to me and say, hey, would you like to pick some, some fancy schmancy dresses? And I thought to myself, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I would. Why not? <laughs> Maybe. Perhaps. Now, funnily enough, I do have this memory of looking at JJ's house when I was in grade 11 or grade 12 and looking for my formal dress. You know, there's so many dresses on their website, so many options for formal dresses, homecoming, bridesmaid, you name it, it's on there. And I remember just seeing all the dresses and the different colors and that you could have a custom size and I thought to myself, no. <laughs> Can't be true. I was definitely a more cautious shopper. So I thought this would be a really good opportunity to test them out. Now, obviously there's been a bunch of review videos. I've had a couple of friends who've bought things from JJ's house and they look great in them. So today we're gonna to be testing out five different dresses. Oh, but I wanted to kind of pick some sort of more princessy, girly options and some more kind of sleek, minimal options. Just giving you a bit of a flavor so I can kind of show you a variety because ultimately I could have picked very similar dresses but I kind of just wanted to try some different things but I did get custom sizing for all of these dresses and I think it is a kind of small extra charge on top of the cost of the dress depending on what dress you buy and also I do think it adds a little bit more lead time to the order although I don't think much because these came actually pretty quickly from me ordering it to arriving keep in mind that it might be different if you are a customer like I can't report on the genuine customer experience in that way so it could have been that my dresses were fast tracked or it could just be that they were done at the exact same time as everything else i'm not totally sure but just something to keep in mind i feel like that's enough babbling for now and i'm just gonna get right into it and pop on the first dress okay so here is dress number one now when i think of american style prom or homecoming this is definitely the kind of dress that i think of i think it's very vintage soft kind of like a retro feel very princessy super girly and it also kind of reminds me of early era ariana grande kind of vibes it's definitely a little bit more feminine and super sweet than what i normally wear but that said i do love it i definitely do feel like a princess and i feel like high school me would have been obsessed with this dress now all of the dresses that i'm going to be showing you today do have inbuilt 
kind of padding or cups, which I kind of like and I kind of dislike. When it's a dress kind of like this one, which has a low back as well. I find it really frustrating to try and find bras that work for any outfit so much so that I will not buy outfits that don't have inbuilt support because I don't want to have to figure out the bra or the taping situation around it. I just think it's too difficult. But because this has inbuilt kind of cups and straps, it does help a little bit. Is it as much support as I would ideally like? Not quite. So I think if you are someone who does require quite a bit of support or prefers quite a bit of support, you might still want to use some fashion tape or something like that to get the amount of support you need because these aren't, you know, like actual bras. There's no wire built in. It's just more kind of a cup and a little bit of elastic around the top to stop it from slipping down, which I do appreciate. With the strapless dress, there's nothing worse than it just slowly falling and you're having to wiggle it up. Um, obviously there's shoulder straps as well, but I don't feel like I really need to wiggle it up because it just sits quite nicely. And one thing I really like is that it has this plasticky kind of mesh along the bottom of the skirt and both of them actually, but it gives it that really beautiful ruffled edge. And I think if you bought a dress like this without that, it just wouldn't have that shape and it just wouldn't look as nice as it does on the website. And this looks like pretty close to what it looks like on the website. I would say it looks pretty much exactly the same. I don't feel like I got it out of the bag and I kind of felt bamboozled. <laughs> that was not the case. I think it looks exactly like what it does on the website. This one only comes in one color, which is a blush pink kind of color, which is this color, wow, my mind. <laughs> it is definitely more of a neutral, baby pink that I think would suit most skin tones. Another thing to note, obviously when you have straps like this, you know, you're never gonna be able to raise the roof with your hands because it is stopping you from moving. But because the material has a little bit of a stretch in it, it is comfy, like you can move with you know, the amount of freedom of movement you would expect for a dress like this. Because I really hate it when I have really cute dresses like this and then I just like feel like my arms are in a false spine. <laughs> you know, the, the guy from Star Wars and he does like choke, but like, on your arms. Ah! It does have two like little elastic bands that keep peeking out and I keep trying to tuck them in and they keep popping out. So I don't know if I meant to put them under this sleeve to kind of keep the dress up, maybe? Hang on, let me try that. I've put them under. I don't know if it really provides me any extra support and now I just feel like I have two layers that I'm worried about. This part falls down, it's gonna show the elastic thing. And I know you might be thinking it's the things to hang the dress on the hangers by, but I have those two and I've tucked them in. They're fine to stay in there, a fabric tag. Just this little guy here. And so I think it is meant to be part of the dress. I personally don't love the look of clear elastic um, if I can avoid it because I just prefer for the dress silhouette to be clean, but I guess it's there. <laughs> and I'm just taking the details on my phone. So this dress was 116. Australian dollars. So maybe just under a hundred US dollars, which I think for a formal dress, a homecoming dress, I don't think is very expensive. And for me personally, this is just a me thing. I think that buying a short dress for a formal or homecoming is a lot more multi-purpose and can be reused a lot more times when it comes to formal events. I actually bought a short formal dress for one of my formals and I have found that it was really a good option <laughs> Because even though it was really popular and I think maybe the more popular choice to wear long dresses at the time, I've been able to wear that dress to lots of kind of cocktail events and I've been able to wear it to weddings and things like that just because it's a little bit more multi-purpose because it's still really formal and dressed up but depending on how you style it, I've been able to just make it work for other events. Whereas I think with ball gowns, while they're really beautiful and if that's your thing, obviously go for it, okay? It's your night. But if you are budget conscious and are wanting to get a little bit more mileage out of a dress and maybe some more rewear, I do think that a short dress like this is a good choice, good option. To me, I just think this is a super classic, timeless princessy dress and I think it's really gorgeous. I think it's super cute and I love the structure and the flow and like, look, when I do a little turn, that is so cute. Imagine dancing and doing a spin and just getting that Hollywood moment. I wish there was a little bit more support though. <laughs> just a tiny bit more. But I, again, I can probably fashion tape that and work around it. But I just wanted to show it to you as it is because it's designed to be fine alone. And it's it's fine alone. But I just want a little bit, a little bit more. So that was the first dress and it's actually the only short dress I've picked today, um, mainly because I wanted to try some fun princess dresses. But I thought I should show this to you because I think it's super sweet and simple, but still really glam. I feel like it's a dress that doesn't wear you that makes sense and also just practically I wore a short dress for my formal and I think it's a really good option I want to promote that 
as a choice <laughs> because I just think it's good business sense. You can be a princess, but you can be a princess with forward thinking and budget planning skills. A financially savvy princess. That's what I wish for all of you. <laughs> I just want to say I think I kind of snapped in picking the colour for this dress. They tend to have one that is in a display colour that's been photographed in that colour and then you can pick from some of the other colours and it can sometimes show you kind of a mock-up of what colour it's going to be but it's just kind of photoshopped if that makes sense. It's not really exactly what it would look like. I think this may have been one of the ones where I saw a review of someone getting it in this colour and I thought it looked really gorgeous and it does. The one on the website was a soft pink which is also really pretty but I wanted to kind of pick a slight variety of different colours to be able to show them to you and this is in the colour Dusk and it's this really gorgeous lilac grey silver oyster. Yeah that's a lot of describing words and I think it's gorgeous. Oh I kind of ruined the reveal. That's okay. Uh, it has pockets. I know some people are pro pockets through and through because of the practicality and I get it but I do think for me sometimes I think that pockets can ruin a silhouette with you know a big phone and your keys and a little card case. I just prefer a bag at times if it means the silhouette of my outfit is going to look cuter. Yeah? Yeah. But these pockets they are deep boys. Let me grab my phone and see if that fits. Oh yeah. It completely fits my phone and it goes down enough. <laughs> Mm, what a fun motion to do on the internet. Uh, it goes down enough that it feels like it's secure. So the top of the phone is sort of below kind of the opening of the pocket, which means that it's not just gonna fall out. And it's sort of voluminous enough that you can't actually see it. So this is an occasion where pockets in a dress good. So if one can hold your phone, another one can hold a small car case and maybe some keys. You are probably good to go if you don't want to wear a bag. Because a lot of times it is kind of annoying to have, you know, a tiny little clutch and like put all your stuff in it and carry it. And then it's another thing that you need to match to your outfit, which if you don't have one that you feel matches, it's, you know, you feel like you need to buy another bag. But not so the case here. The other thing is on the website, they don't really show the, the shine of the satiny dresses. They kind of look more matte. Whereas in real life, they just have this really gorgeous metallic sheen. I don't love costume satin, like that super duper shiny, kind of my first cosplay <laughs> because with the shine I feel like it kind of makes it a bit more magical you know you could add some celestial themed embellishments and it would just be a really kind of simple but elegant dress and again it's another dress that doesn't really wear you so I have mixed feelings on spaghetti straps and how they look on me personally but essentially I don't like them to be sort of like coming up halfway here because I don't think it's particularly flattering I want them to be kind of right on where the crease of my underarm is. Think of how, you know, like a Barbie's arms are kind of cut right there on the torso. They're not cut like in here and then her arms aren't like there. Her arms are like inside her torso, that is. <laughs> but I guess what I'm saying is I wish the way they placed the straps on these was a little further out. And I just wish that also, this has a bit of space in it and it's just a little bit awkward. It's just the fit and maybe the pattern or a combo of the two is slightly not my favorite. I am gonna include some vlog footage at the end, but spoiler, I actually did a shoot with my lovely friend Erin, who's an incredible photographer, and we did a couple of photos with this dress and another one, which I will show you. Um, and the other dress, we loved how it looked in the photos, but this one, a lot more of the photos I felt like looked weird, and I did have to adjust it more, so I didn't look proportionally weird to me. Does that make sense? And everyone is totally different and I did just realize that I think all the other dresses are off the shoulder. <laughs> it's just a style that I really like for evening dresses and that I find flattering to me. But some people really don't like off the shoulder dresses and think they look terrible. So everyone's different, but I just wanted to voice that if you feel a similar way about spaghetti straps, that this was a little, something was just like slightly off for me. But personal feelings aside, I do think it is a really gorgeous dress. I think this color is just, I don't want to harp on about the colour, but I'm going to harp on about the colour because I think it is such a gorgeous and different colour. So this dress is 158 Australian dollars, which I think is probably around 120, 130 US dollars. Bar the slight personal gripe issue, I think this dress is gorgeous, quite comfortable as well. Other than the uh, mild personal gripe, I am quite impressed with this dress. I just feel like it's moon princess elf fairy goodness. I just think it's, mm, mm. Oh. let's move on. <laughs> I am so stoked to share this one because this was one of the ones where I thought it was cute, but I wasn't, didn't think it was gonna be, you know, a front runner. Didn't think it was gonna be 
so gorgeous. This reminds me so much of those illustrated fairy books. I don't know if you were Shelley Barber stands like I was. When it comes to formal glamour, I love an off-the-shoulder silhouette. I just think they are super special. They're not something I wear every day, but I do think they are quite flattering for me personally. If I may say so myself, and I will, because it's my channel and I'm allowed to say that. Personal growth. <laughs> but this is just so stunning. It's sort of asymmetrical in the front, so there's sort of a little peak every moment for your legs and shoes. And it also makes it easier to walk in because you have an avenue to walk without, you know, tripping over the front of the dress because there's no front of the dress to trip on. Yeah. Now on the website, this was shown in more of a red color, which I also thought kind of gave it a really romantic Romeo and Juliet kind of vibe, but also sort of a salsa dress vibe. And I had seen this swatch of this color mist and I wanted to get one of the dresses in it, but I wasn't sure which one. And then I thought this one, I don't know, it just, it kind of, I envisioned it in my brain and I thought, perhaps. Honestly, I'm just really surprised that the custom colors worked out as well as I did. I will say there's a little trick. There is a part on the JJ's House website where you can go to see photographed swatches of the colors. And I found that really helpful because when you click the little color button on the website to show what it looks like on the dress, you're not, it doesn't look real. But also if you go into the reviews, there's so many reviews of people sharing what color they got in different kinds of dresses. So provided the dresses of the same material, so if it's both chiffon or if they're both, you know, the satin that I showed you of the last one, and it's in that color, even if it's a different style of dress, it's gonna be the same fabric. So you can kind of get an idea that way, cool tips. But I just remember I put this on and I was just really surprised because it's the kind of thing where, you know, it looks nice online, but it's a little unassuming again, because when it's photographed, it kind of just takes away the movement and the magical essence of the gown, which I will show you at the end. I've got some vlog footage of the photo shoot and I'll show you a couple of the pictures. This one just, looks really stunning. I also think the draping of it is super flattering because it comes in really nicely at the waist, but instead of like going straight out or kind of being really fitted, it just sort of flows nicely. And that's, that's what you get with a really nice chiffon. But I just think it is a really flattering cut. To me, I just think it's like ultra feminine, you know, nymph kind of vibes, but it's not super juvenile with the frills. It's not frills and bows and like over the top. I just think it's a really nice, mix between the two. Sometimes like really feminine details that I like on dresses, I put them on and they just feel a little too frou-frou on me. And I just feel like I just look a little bit like I've just got <laughs> bits of frills and bows tacked on me. But this, I just feel very comfortable in. Uh, I don't really have a lot else to say because unlike the other dresses, I don't really have any gripes with this one. Again, you know, we I could always do with more support, just all around, you know emotionally, physically, with this dress specifically, I could do with a little more support because again, the back is really low. So you really can't wear a strapless bra with this one. You would have to wear a sticky bra or use tape, which I don't love. I am a lazy lady of leisure and I do not wish to tape my bosom. I don't feel like I would actually do it for this. I think it's fine. But if, if I'm talking small gripes, I just wish it was a little bit more supportive. This dress is listed online at 127 Australian dollars. And I think, you know, if, if we're talking apples and oranges, then compared to the last one, which is a little bit more expensive, I definitely love this one the most. I just think it's really flattering. I think it's quite special. It's a little bit different. If you're into kind of the feminine, slightly girly pastel style, I think this is a real winner. So yes, I am totally obsessed, besotted with this dress and you can go head over to my Instagram. If you like, I'm gonna be posting some pictures from the shoot that I did with Erin in this dress. And I think she did a really nice job. They're really cute. And also hang around till the end of the video if you wanna see a little bit of photo shoot vlog chaos. This one's a little bit out of left field for me. It's a little bit vampier, but I kind of feel like it's everything. And I'm sorry to inform you I'm going to be shutting down this channel because I now have a career as a holiday Barbie. So, them's the breaks. This one was on the website in, I want to say, black velvet. And I remember looking and saying, oh, that's like a really cute goth kind of vibe. But I wonder if they do it in, you know, a burgundy or kind of like a really dark green. And they did. So I got the green one because I thought it was just really elegant kind of old hollywood sort of energy and i just i just thought it'd be cute and it is so my judgment was correct i think this is absolutely stunning i will say 
There's a bit of a train kind of pooling situation to make it really, you know, Hollywood red carpet kind of vibe. For me, I will just trip on it. Um, I do think it's nice, but it is very, you know, just trip on dress vibes. <laughs> but in terms of the fit, it's this kind of stretch velvet. And because it's sort of dark and got a bit of a sheen to it, I just think it is super duper flattering. It just absolutely hugs the curves. Again, same situation here where we have, you know, some padding here for the top. However, unlike the other dresses, which are really low at the back, this one is not super low at the back. So I actually do think I could wear a strapless bra and really get the kind of shape and support that I'm wanting, which is good. There's something about it which says like Christmas to me, but also not because I live in Australia. So it's always summer at Christmas time and it tends to be more of a wearing white linen, cute mini dress sort of vibe rather than full green velvet velour fantasy, but I make my own rules. And I think even if you were in the burgundy, like the oxblood kind of color, <laughs> really pretty. In terms of nitpicks on this one, probably like the last dress, pretty, pretty minimum. It's just really comfy. The purpley silvery dress and the misty dress, both of them were in a non-stretch fabric that did feel quite firm on the waist, which I thought looked really nice. But I think after a few hours, especially if you're drinking and eating, can feel a little bit like, oh God, I can't wait to get home. But because this is stretch, you can kind of eat and drink and stuff and it'll just accommodate. It also has those weird plastic straps again. And I think you are meant to put them on your arm, but I don't think they help. I don't think they're really keeping the dress up anymore. I think they're just kind of cutting into my arm. So I think I would just cut them off personally. Let's talk price, shall we? Because I think, I think we firmly established that I am in love with this and feel like a gorgeous Christmas angel. So, we're done there. Oh my gosh, I am the titular Christmas princess. It's, is that a Christmas prince? Netflix, don't worry. I have your holiday season 2021 schedule sorted. Vanessa Hudgens, look out. Random blonde lady from the other one, look out. I am here to be in your story, which is somewhat about the royal family, but I'm the Christmas princess. I'm a Christmas princess with random hijinks and also monarchy. That's my title. Working, but I think it's probably what we're going to go with. So this one was 197 Australian dollars and honestly, yeah, good. That's probably around 150, 160 US. So the priciest one we've tried on so far, but I also think it's probably the comfiest. I will say the train, the train is bothering me a little bit, but it's also because I am moving backwards and forwards. I'm sure if I was simply moving in one direction, you know, as you would. I was about to say as a shark, but also just as a person. If I'm walking around, you know, like a sim would, you know, I'm less likely to step on the train, but because I'm going backwards and forwards, it's a little bit less like that. Hard to, hard to tell, but it's also the kind of thing where I could just tailor it to be shorter or less of a train, but then that's not very fun, is it? You have a train because you have a train. <laughs> you don't have a train on your dress because of practicality. You have a train on your dress because you wanna be an icon, a legend, and a moment. Now, come on now. <laughs> Let's move on to the last dress, which is the most over the top. <laughs> so, <laughs> this one is the most princessy of all the dresses, and it is very much Cinderella inspired, probably more specifically the live action Disney one with Lily James, which, okay, the costuming in that movie is stunning. We've got embroidery, we've got a layer of tulle or chiffon, and then another layer with sequins, and we've got the satin kind of underneath. There's a, there's a lot happening. If you are wanting to do a Cinderella costume, I think this is very instantly recognizable, especially with this hue of blue. I just think it's really, oh, did I? Mess that up, I did. Let me remedy that. Would I wear this to my formal or homecoming? I don't know. <laughs> it is really pretty though. I do feel like a princess, but I do feel like it's so like magical extra that it's wearing me a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> I don't know if I quite, you know, have the pizzazz to wear. If I put on a tiara, maybe it would be good. <laughs> but definitely the other ones are more, I think, wearable, wearable? Wearable and palatable to a wider audience and to more things. But if you just want something super extra, super glamorous, super gorgeous, I mean, the one I would say major criticism I have is I really don't love the bodice. It's very interesting. The other ones, they were kind of cut. So it was like a half cup sort of bra, or not a half cup bra, but this one is like a full circle 
molded bra, which means that you're kind of meant to stay inside the dress and have it cut here. I don't think that's the most flattering for me personally. I think some people do look really great with kind of like that straight cut, but for me, I would prefer this to be a sweetheart neckline or be cut a little bit lower. But because of how the sewn in cups are, I literally, it has to sit there. Otherwise it would look really, really misshapen. So I think that's a bit of an interesting element. I, I don't know if I love that. And the kind of elastic at the top is cutting in quite intensely. It's very firm. So it's, it's, not the most comfortable of the dresses we've tried on, but obviously, again, you're kind of just compromising for the magic, aren't you? The sparkles. If you're talking princess ball gown, you know, dancing with Prince Charming, this has the most swish, it's the most fabric we've seen. And I'll double check the price, but I do, it is the most expensive of the dresses. So this one was 274 Australian dollars. So like 230 or 40 US. I mean, it is definitely pricey. And while I don't think it's my favorite of the five, just personally on me and of, on my figure, I do think that price is fair because the amount of material and the work you're getting, this would be the most labor intensive because of the you know, additional applique that they have to put on, you know, the little embroidered pieces as well as the different layers. It's just the most fabric as well, just the most fabric often correlate with cost. So I don't think the cost is unfair. I think I. In fact, I think it is totally fair to get this kind of dress with a similar amount of volume and glam on another online retailer. I think you would be paying quite a lot. So in terms of is this dress worth it for the price? I would think yes. And especially if, you know, things like this type of neckline, if that suits you, or if you're just really looking for just a perfect Cinderella type dress, I think the price is definitely worth it. And, you know, compared to a lot of the really popular princess dresses on the market, Tudor Matoshi, Lyrica Matoshi, those are all totally worth it too at their price. In my opinion, I think they're totally worth it at their price, but they are usually around the $500 to $1,000 mark, sometimes more than that. So if you're looking for something that's more around the $200 to $300 mark, this, this fits the bill. I think if you were trying to get this dress for a cheaper price, and same as if you were trying to get any of those, you know, really gorgeous princess dresses at a cheaper price, you know, you might get something that looks like it kind of, but it's not gonna be the same. Especially because if you're getting them made to size, kind of made to order, that is definitely something to take into consideration. If you have something specific that you want for a formal dress or a specific color you want, and you kind of know the sort of dress you want, I think you can get what you're looking for. I came in skeptical of JJ's house, but I am emerging not skeptical. I was trying to think of another cool word to describe that, but I really enjoyed trying on a bunch of princess dresses. It's not something I get to do a lot. I feel very, I feel very special. I could almost say I feel like a princess. So that was me trying on a bunch of fancy dresses and twirling around like I'm the queen of the internet.com.au. So like I said before, I also did take two of these dresses out do a shoot with the lovely Erin. So if you want to take a look at that footage, I'm going to insert it here now. Hello. Hello. I'm here with the, ooh. Oh, ooh. she's sunny. Oh my gosh, she's ah. golden. <laughs> yeah. We are, I'm there. I need to put my sunglasses <laughs> on, hang on. Oh no, it's the same as in the last one because you brought them oh. and I did. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Ah, oh, relaxing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm here with the beautiful Erin, stunning legend. Yeah, she is the icon, the legend, the moment. Now, come on now. And I'm just holding the dress because it's a long boy. It makes me look really bad because I'm not holding it. Anything. Well, you can hold it if you like. I just thought I was like, I was like, I don't want, I don't want to start the footage with it being like, ah, uh, now we're like a lion dance. Like, <laughs> I don't want to start the footage being like, this is Erin, my slave, who is my slave. But we are in the, where are we going? The fairy. I think it's called Secret Forest. Secret Forest. Secret Tunnel. <laughs> We're going to go take some pictures in one of the dresses, which I showed you in the video, which will be filmed at a later date, but Currently serving time travels. <laughs> mm. Oh, that is very pretty backlighting. Uh -huh. I was oh. just thinking the same Ooh thing. La la. <laughs> Put the dress on. That's the one we're shooting with first. And um, it's freshly cut grass everywhere. So much. <laughs> mm. As if nature wasn't already allergy inducing enough. The most mucusy princess. We just picked of the them best all. timing. Mm. I'm doing a phlegm concept inspired by um, the four. Hence the color. The four. What's it called? Humus? The four. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the like bio type thing. Yeah, it's like phlegm, saccharine, <laughs> the other ones. Phlegm. Phlegm. <laughs> the concept. It's going very well. 
I concur. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> the light is really pretty on the phone. Although I think we've we've mostly we've lost. mostly lost. That's okay. <laughs> what were you saying? I was doing like one of those like TikTok style cottage core princess running kind of shots. What were you? What was the reference you were saying? Um, the Twilight. Twilight. When you know what, the way they shot the running scenes in in Twilight, they like made them run, but they were like on a, on a conveyor belt thing, and they would move the conveyor belt. So they were running at what looked like a normal speed, but they were moving further than they should have been. Yeah, yeah. When they yeah. were like kind of running normally, but then the background was like zoom, and you're like, this is weird. Like anime style. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that they were running at two. Yeah, it was. It, it doesn't really physics wise. Well, they makes... had them on a harness, and they would like oh, drag them when they'd like drag when they come in from like high or something like they jumped down from the sky it's did so they ridiculous. Do that? i think they did or a bit. i'm thinking of i think something. they are supposed to be able to jump a lot yeah hold on Bella, like monkey. jumps over rivers and stuff in the last one. that's very strange oh, oh it's so dark <laughs> it's all blurry <laughs> mm, samsung Delicious. all right part two oh, i could put light on us oh it's okay <laughs> no don't worry about that <laughs> Literally two minutes ago, I was like, I'm not shy anymore. I'm living my best life. As soon as you're like, I'll put a torch on you. I'm like, no. No, it's fine. It's <laughs> got a little bit too much. attention grabbing. A little bit too much. I don't want to be on influences in the wild. <laughs> I don't, I'm not ready for the shame. My self-esteem isn't high enough. I'm all right, actually. Okay. It's really cold and we're hungry. So we're going to shoot now. And then, um, yeah, vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Very good lights. Very good lights. Very good lights. Very beautiful. Very thin eyes. Oh. <laughs> Quality camera. No. Anyway, we're all done. <laughs> <laughs> that light is really pretty. It's pretty, isn't it? Instagram. Wow. My makeup looks really good in my phone camera because it's all like it still looks bokeh-ing. Mm, yummy. Mm, mm, Samsung. Let me know down in the comments below which of the five dresses was your fave. I think I love the misty one. The kind of misty near pet water fairy one but i do really like the velvet one as well that was a that was a moment but let me know your favorite don't let me influence your decision thank you again to jj's house for sending me these dresses to give you my review i'm gonna pop the links down in the description below so you can go and check out their website Alrighty, i'm gonna go put on some sweatpants because i think i've done enough of being a glamour toad for this evening as always thank you so so much for watching and i will see you in the next one bye